Composer, producer, and music director Kenny Seymour wears every hat you can imagine for the music department in film, television, and professional theater. He shares his journey and advice on how to make it in music. Take us from little Kenny to wow. I'm on Broadway Kenny. To condense that whole story because that gets a little bit long, <laughs> I started off singing jingles when I was younger. Um, from there, I did my first production, which was Fame the Musical at the Coconut Grove Playhouse. And from there, I started touring, actually, outside of theater in like the musical realm of music director for artists like Missy Elliott and uh, Janay. I played with Jodeci for a while and a few other artists, 98 Degrees. And after that episode was over, um, I ventured into the musical theater realm. And I was brought in uh, by one of my good friends and men my mentor, Harold Wheeler, who recommended me for... Um, the Wiz. And I was a dance music arranger along with Ron Melrose, who was the mm -hmm. dance music arranger and the music director for that at that time. And from then on, I established a relationship with La Jolla Playhouse and uh, came back to do Memphis. And uh, now I'm on my third production, The Tallest Tree in the Forest. You went from performer and then you flipped on the other side. Yeah. How was that transition? Well, I think I'm always a performer at heart because I'm a pianist and I grew up in surrounded by music. And you did perform in Memphis. I did perform in <laughs> Memphis. I was, I was a playing conductor, um, aside from the parts when I conducted off stage. But there's a part of me that always loves playing on stage. I am a composer and an orchestrator by heart, but you know, put me in front of a piano and it's just it's showtime. What, normally, what do people give you to start reeling you in? I sometimes would get some demo recordings. I would get the script. I'd read the script. Uh, it would be a phone conversation. Sometimes we'd meet, have lunch, and discuss the project and the vision for it and how I can help facilitate that. And, you know, the whole team that they're bringing together is like, oh, we're going to get this lighting designer and we, we want to get this choreographer and we want to get this, these, these, te these types of people together. And from then you start to see a vision of where the project can go and you go, yeah, I'd like to be a part of this. I can really, get, I can really dig this. And what are those times where you, what are some red flags for you? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I'm permitted to say that. <laughs> you don't have to name names. You don't have to, you don't have to get specific. But... I would say something that just doesn't resonate with you. I think that your own uh, internal warning system kind of goes off when you go, you know, I'm, I'm not sure if what I do best blends with this project. I wouldn't say that the project is bad. It's just that it's probably something that I'm not. You know, it just doesn't seem like a mesh, right. you know? And when you're spending a lot of time with a creative team and a cast, you really want that blend because it's, it's, it's like a domino effect. It's when one person is, you know, out of sync, it can spread and it can cause a little thing amongst the cast. And everybody, everybody being on the same page really helps. The nuts and bolts of that. Let's talk about, first of all, what union would people join if they are the musical director on Broadway? Okay, uh, Local 802. Okay. That's the Musicians Union of New York. And um, and that would be anybody that's playing in the pit, doing anything, they would join that. Anything that's a union job. For people that are breaking into the business, sometimes that's a difficult decision of when to join, when not to join, because one of the benefits of being non-union is you can develop your craft. Right. What are some milestones that might help people make that decision? I, don't, I think the time happens differently for every person. Um, there are some people who do non-equity shows and, you know, they're comfortable with that, but then eventually they want to make the transition. They say, I'm not ready to join equity yet, but then when they do, you know, that comes along as the next progression in their career. Um, it's, it's hard to say because it's, it's very unique for every individual. What's a typical day, the amount of hours you'll put in one of these shows? Um, a typical day. In the pre-production process, it's long. I mean, you know, you start off with, you know, the rehearsal process. Now, if I'm a music director and I'm doing dance arrangements, that's a whole other scenario. But as a music director, you're basically sitting while they go through different scene work and you're teaching vocals. Sometimes you'll have two rooms running at the same time. The director will be in one and you'll be in with a choreographer in the ensemble or you'll teach vocals. It can go anywhere from 10 to midnight. Uh, during the 10 out of 12s, you know, during tech. 
when you get there at 10 a.m. and they're basically you're teching until midnight. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so um, it can be very long in the beginning, but once the show starts running, I mean, you have a few brush up rehearsals every now and then, but it's pretty much a set schedule, you know, depending upon what theater you're at and when your matinees are and uh, how often you have vocal brush ups. But eight o'clock, seven o'clock shows and then two matinees, either two and eight or two and seven, and then sometimes a late matinee on a Sunday, like a three. But um, it's pretty, it's, it's a set schedule. Can you describe your relationship between the choreographer and the director? They, they work together. They're both telling a story. Um, they're, both, they're both very passionate about what they want. Um, I've been fortunate to work with some really, really good directors and some really, really good choreographers. The relationship when working with a choreographer is, is a little bit more like live performance because if I'm working with a choreographer on a dance arrangement, I'm basically helping him facilitate getting a language for what he wants to use, what type of choreography, and then once he has that language, kind of interweaving it into the song or, or whatever number in the show they're working with. So that is different than sitting in a room working with a director and we're going scene to scene, working through underscoring for emotional content and transitions. You know, A lot of times they come into play because a lot of the transitions are choreographed. So um, the relationship between the two, I'd say they're pretty similar, just with different performance dynamics. What's some... Um... Words of wisdom, advice, mm -hmm. comedic anecdotes yes. <laughs> that you want to share with somebody that is passionate about this art form. I think mentorship is really important. Um, I think perfecting your craft uh, in a musical theater setting, learning to read music. I cannot stress that enough. Um, learning to read it, learning to write it, um, but not letting one hinder the other. Mm -hmm. um, keep your feel. If you're a player, keep your feel, but then sharpen up your reading chops, you know. Um, as far as mentorship, I've been blessed with an amazing friend and mentor, uh, Harold Wheeler, which is <laughs> one of the giants in the industry, and he's been such a beneficial source um, of, of knowledge and wisdom. And there are certain things now that I'm passing on to other people, and because I, I realize the importance of mentorship, um, can you progress in the field without a mentor? Yeah, you can, but it, it definitely helps. And be passionate about what you do and commit to it. You know, don't do it, you know, halfway. If you're going to do it, do it, you know, and be nice, <laughs> be nice. <laughs> you don't have to be the mean guy all the time. You know, there's a time when you have to crack the whip and say, okay, wait, let's bring it in everybody, you know, but for the most part, you can be nice you know, and have fun with what you do.